All right, let's get this train going. So I'm JP, JP Miller. Some people call me John and that's all right. My colleague here is Paul. Paul's an entrepreneur, full, full stack developer, digital marketer, and a life coach. He's a true friend, one of my closest friends personally, a United States veteran, and he's working with clients that are military veterans that are transitioning into a civilian lifestyle. Paul, would you like to say a few words to get us started? Sure. Um, really excited to have everybody here. Uh, super excited to be helping you guys uh, develop your, your careers, grow your careers, uh, change careers, transition, all those sort of things. Um, I'm mostly going to be here monitoring the chat. Uh, so if you've got any questions, any feedback, just drop it in the chat and I'll respond. Right on. Thanks, Paul. Well, you might say that together we are John and Paul, the apostles of career growth and acceleration. So for now, to get started, if you would like to share your name, where you live, and a sentence about your career goals and what you're hoping to get out of this webinar today, that would be awesome. Can I go first? Yeah, go ahead, Wei. Okay, no you problem. So my name is Wei Chun, and you can call me uh, Marcus. I'm now live in Taiwan, and I'm going to move to Japan in the next few months. Uh, since the uh, uh, COVID situation, I'm not sure when I will uh, relocate to there. I'm a data scientist with uh, two years experience uh, in the field. And my career goal is to uh, get into se uh, senior level of this field to be a special analyst and eventually move to the maybe people manager with more leadership uh, demonstration and eventually to start my own business in the field. Thank you. Awesome. I've actually known Wei for about three years now, I believe. I met Wei through Udacity. He was a student there and, and looking for his first data science job. And, and the way I remember a little hesitant about his skills and what he could do. And we talked quite a few times and I'm just really, he got a job with Amazon as a data scientist. He did that for about a year, right? And then uh, moved on, he's in a new role now. And just to see the growth that, that Wei Chun has experienced over like three years has been phenomenal for me just to see how, how active he is and the confidence that he has got now. So it's, it's really great. I'm glad to have you on the call. Thanks Wei, it means a lot for me, uh, for you to be here. Himanch Jian is from India, just graduated this year, working as a software developer and is happy with the current company, but wants to move abroad in the next few years. And Himanch is joining this webinar for guidance on how to do that. And they don't shortlist your resume for interviews. Okay. So yeah, so talking about you know, those jobs and how to take those steps, how to get into business and project management. So everyone has these goals, more software engineering, moving abroad from your home country to a new country and how can you, how can you get attention? So we'll talk about some of those things. And I thank you all for sharing. And that is the essence of what we're doing here today. We're sharing stories. So as I've mentioned, I'm going to be offering you practical advice to help you tell your story with confidence so you will own your narrative and then you're going to use your narrative to propel your career to the next level, whether that is software engineering in a foreign country or that's founding your own company or becoming a project manager and getting that certification. Personally, I lived for too many years with a lack of confidence in myself. I look to others for their confidence and I follow their vision for my life. And that worked for a time. When I was 19, I moved a thousand miles away from my family to join this organization in the Southern United States. And we lived this entire lifestyle of austerity and piety. My associates and I were singularly focused on the goals of our leaders we attached ourselves to their stories and not to brag, but I was one of the most zealous. I was rewarded for that zealousness and commitment and I quickly moved up the organizational ladder in a very short time. 
because I gave everything I had to that cause. I put my entire self into it. Nonetheless, I lacked confidence in myself. I felt like I was nothing. Like I wasn't worthy of goodness or of love. I lacked that self-confidence and it caused me to settle for less. Like for years, I had this fancy title as a retail store manager, but I earned poverty level wages. At one point, I had an opportunity to take on a good job in an entry level engineering position. But my confidence was so low in my own abilities that I let that opportunity slip away and I stayed where I was for years. And now looking back, that era when I wasn't intentionally pushing myself to grow is the saddest epoch of my life. It wasn't until I changed my environment by getting the hell out of there that I was able to reconstruct who I was. And I found myself and I found my confidence by performing on stage. Yeah, I wrote jokes, I performed stand up, I wrote sketch comedy, joined an improv comedy troupe. I even took part in a play and I loved every minute of that preparation and performance because it felt so liberating. And around that same time, I also made a concentrated effort to teach myself how to code. Now, I've been able to develop confidence over the past several years by surrounding myself with people who are positive and aspire for more. It's allowed me to push myself to try new things and have patience with my failures. So now I'm focused on building my vision for the future. So when, I'm, when I fail, I'm able to fail forward. Uh, having a sense of self-confidence is important because it fuels ambition and drives you forward in spite of the setbacks. You have confidence mixed in with discipline pushes you when you don't feel like it. We call that determination, resiliency, tenacity, and persistence. Confidence helps you take the risks required to push yourself to the next level. A strong sense of self-confidence helps you stand up against your detractors, people who say you can't or you shouldn't, and advocate for your needs. Now, innately, you know this. You don't need me to tell you how essential confidence is for your life. You know that you should be more confident, but maybe you don't know how. And that's where the conflict is, right? Our subconscious mind is always running this tape, this narrative of who you are. And unfortunately, most of those thoughts are negative. And that tape runs every day, day after day, almost always the same message, day in and day out. And the negativity of the inner mind can be maddening. And perhaps what is most frustrating is that changing subconscious messages can be equally challenging. To compound the issue, we develop these intricate belief systems about the world and our place in it. And once you've locked into a belief system, it can be very challenging to break out of it. Right? And I know this from personal experience. I lived in this all consuming self-deprecating belief system that sought to own my autonomy. I wrestled with that for years before I was able to break free. And I was only able to do so after an intensely stressful and traumatic experience. Breaking my old belief system felt like walking to the precipice of the darkest canyon. Thankfully, I had the presence of mind to stop lying to myself and take time to observe and accept the reality of my situation. From that moment forward, I was able to begin constructing a new life and a new version of myself. And that experience taught me hard lessons, unrelenting micro stressors from continually battling negativity will chip away at your peace of mind. You may feel a boost in your resolution here or there, but without addressing those underlying issues, any burst of confidence will seep out and leave you right back where you were. For a lot of the world, that's where we are right now. Months and months of this pandemic and constant stress. Okay, so let's address the issue. It may be cliche to say so, but if you change your story, you'll change the trajectory of your life. You can play positive self-affirming recordings when you go to sleep, and over time, you'll begin to take control of that recording in your head. 
you flip the script such that you're the hero of the story, but you've got to have grace with yourself during the process. It takes 66 days to form a habit, almost two months, a little more than two months. We hear a lot about 30 day challenges, but that's half a span too short for meaningful and lasting change. 66 days to replace your broken, self-defeating mindset with a positive, uplifting paradigm that would drive success for the rest of your life. And that's not a bad deal. You commit to 66 days to change one habit at a time, and you've got a recipe for exponential growth. Uh, you change the script inside your head, and everything else begins to seemingly take care of itself. Flip the script and you'll make better decisions and the better decisions will drive your actions towards success. Yeah, Himanch is trying to overcome laziness. You know, that's great. And, you know, they say developers, one of the best qualities of, of an engineer is laziness because you figure out how to do the thing one time so you never have to do it again. And, and if you kind of like flip your script in that way, I'm going to do this thing one time so I don't ever have to do it again you'll actually find that you're productive. You'll, you'll find that productivity. And in the fear of what people make of your idea, I lived, I lived there for 11 years. In my life, I lived there 11 years. And at some point, you've got to realize that your dreams are not worth compromising. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, you know, we often think about these, these big decisions because that's what people see, right? People see the big decisions, but the truth is that big decisions have already been made by your, your small daily habits, small daily habits, choices, and actions. If you make the smart decisions, you make smart decisions for the small things, the big things will fall into place. So let's take some time on how you can focus on displaying confidence. All right, so what are small changes that you can make to create confident behavior? You wanna throw some ideas into the chat? That'd be awesome. I love that 20% of what we do decides 80% of what we get. Yeah, we see that, we see that play out in so many areas of, of life and economics. Moderate effort over time produces big, big results. That's right. So let's start, I love that. It starts with a positive mindset. You know, they say everything is created twice, once in your mind and then with your hands. So talking about confident behavior, let's start with your posture. Uh, how do you stand? Do you stand to your full height? Uh, I'm a tall guy, six foot three or 1.9 meters. And I have found that I have this habit of making my body smaller to be more level headed with the people around me. Now, I've, I've had to change that behavior in myself because I've decided I'm not going to apologize for my body. And there are other things we do, like little things like, you know, we tuck our hands into our pockets. Uh, you might see women who stand with their feet crossed. You know, I mean, you, can, you can stand up now and you can try this. I, I got my feet crossed here and it's terribly uncomfortable. Now, I've seen fashion advertisements of, of women in this awkward position. It's the most uncomfortable way you could stand. What does that kind of body language say? What are you telling people? We're apologizing for our masculinity or our femininity. It's like we're trying to disappear, you know, so it's not to inconvenience anyone. The kind of body language is telling the world, you know, you can ignore me. I, I'm not a threat to you. I, I'm not, you know, you can just go about your business. I'm not, I'm not here to hurt you. Oh, body language is 60 to 80% of communication. And when we posture our bodies in these compromising positions, we're communicating that we're not confident and we don't have anything to contribute. And then we wonder why we're being ignored. <laughs> you know? So to break that habit, stand in front of a mirror every day, stand to your full height, spread your legs slightly so they're even with your shoulders, put the palms of your hands on your hips and take slow, deep breaths. Feel the air, fill your lungs, and feel your full height. Feel the power in your body. And then tell yourself that you are a champion. And it might feel 
silly at first to be standing in front of a mirror in, in your bathroom or your, your bedroom and say, I am a champion. And you may not believe it at first, but you do that every day. And soon you will start to believe that. Lately, I've been waking up in the morning. The first thing I'm telling myself in the morning is I'm a champion. I'm a champion. I'm a champion. And then I, I get up and I've got this vigor. I'm ready to take on the day. You know, a lack of confidence can also be betrayed by your voice. It might crack when asked a question in an important meeting. Or we might use filler words. You all know them. Uh, like, and, um, you know, you know, and these words kill the strength in our messaging. You develop a confident voice by practicing daily warm-up exercises. Warm up your voice while you're in front of that mirror. Say, me, 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 me. And then, mo, 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 mo. And then, mo, 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 mo. And then you can work through a couple of scales. You know the sound of music. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay. You don't need to be a senior to warm up your voice. We all speak every day. Warm up your voice to prepare it for your moment to speak. And then practice speaking with conviction. If you don't sound like you believe what you're saying, then no one else will believe you either. So we've covered your posture and we've covered your voice. Oh, well, let's talk about how you move. Have you ever seen a predator in the wild when they're on the hunt? Every muscle is in tune with their mind. Millions of years of instincts kicks in and they go into that hunt in full performance mode and they move without apology. You, know, you study cats or wolves in the wild. When you're bored next week at work, find a National Geographic video of predators and watch them in slow motion. Drop that speed down to 0.5 or 0.25 and study the way they walk and how they run. And you'll see the power in their sinews and the majesty in their prowess. And why am I telling you to study these videos? Because you're going to adopt their emotions. I'm going to show you how you can make them your own. And when you do, you can't help but feel confident. We've lost a lot of that animal instinct but the fact of the matter is that we are predators. I'll, I'll tell you how we know. Can I tell a story about my son, Paul? Is, is, that, is that okay? Is that still our message or should we just skip that? Okay, I'll, I'll only do that one. My son, when he was like two, three years old, he's a little guy, toddler, and, and he would walk around the room like he's just like a, like a little Neanderthal. He's like, oh, oh, oh. And he hardly talked, he just grunted, like, oh, oh, oh. And he would go to one corner, oh, oh, oh. And then, and then he'll walk to the next corner. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, I have a three foot caveman living in my house. But it's really like he was surveying his room. Like this is mine. And so he had that animal instinct when he was little. And we, we you know, in this Western society and this like modern society that, that we have and you know, we kind of, I'm an American, we've exported this Western society throughout the whole world, right? And we're all trying to be more and do more in, in these things. And so we've lost this animal instinct. But the fact of the matter is that we are predators. And I'll tell you how we know. Next time you look in a mirror, take a moment and look at where your eyes are placed in your head. And I know it sounds silly because you all know, right, they're all right here in front of your face. You'll look at any mammalian predator and you'll see that we have that in common. And I'm going to remind you of a time when you were perfectly in tune with your instincts. On the day or night, probably night, of your conception, you were in mortal combat with millions of other sperm. You probably don't remember the event, but I'm gonna remind you, you had to be faster. You had to be more tenacious than every last one of your competitors. And you had millions and millions and millions of competitors. And it was a race that only one could win. You know, and, and you, you were there and you were in front. And do you know what happened? You won! Unapologetically, you won. <laughs> and here you are. You were the best on that day. 
So what I want you to do is stop apologizing for who you are physically, mentally, and verbally. You are a champion. And if you tell yourself that long enough, then your behavior will begin to reflect your new script. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to find a rock. You're going to find one that fits comfortably in the palm of your hand. And you're going to place that stone on the floor. And then in your bare stocking feet, step on that stone one foot at a time. Feel the pressure against your foot. Feel the anchor of that rock against your sole. Then put your foot back on the ground and feel the anchor of the floor beneath you. And then repeat with your other foot. And you do that a couple times, repeating until you get the feel of it. And then you're going to walk. You'll walk around the room as though you're stepping on that rock with each step. And what, you, what it makes you do is it makes you feel the sinews and the muscles in your legs. And it makes you aware of all the strength you have in your lower body. You hold up your head and you'll let your arms work at your sides. And you do this every day. And you practice that every day, at least once a day. And by the time we're out of this quarantine, your colleagues, I promise you, your colleagues will feel a difference when they're in your presence. And you know, this is no joke. You know who exhibits this movement that I'm describing to you perfectly? Vladimir Putin. And you find a video of Putin walking and you'll see this behavior in him. He moves and he looks like an apex predator. And when he walks, his guards all watch him. And when he moves past them, they turn their heads and they watch him. And it's this whole pomp and circumstance of, of like authority. And I'm not endorsing his politics, but he has mastered this kind of confident movement that I'm describing to you. All right, do we have any questions out there um, before we move into practical advice regarding job application materials? Now, I love what you said there, Hamanch, about staying true to yourself and staying disciplined. And like overcoming imposter syndrome, the best way to not feel like an imposter is to do. It's just to do. Say like, I would like to wanna be a software engineer. Engineer software. Like find a project and, and work on it. And if you don't, you don't know what to work on, you can look around your neighborhood, you can look around your community and say like, what problems does my community have? Or what's something that irritates me that I've just learned to live with? I think this is a good place to start. What's irritating me that I've learned to live with? And then start thinking of ways that you could resolve that pain. How can you fix that pain? And then do that a little bit every day. Like you said, if you stay disciplined, you do a little bit every day. We overestimate what we can do in a day and underestimate what we can do in a lifetime. You just do that a little bit every day and you'll, and, and that imposter syndrome will just vanish. Yeah, and then as far as like arrogance, so we're talking about confidence and not arrogance, right? And there's, there's a fine line there between confidence and arrogance. And I was working with one young man and he said, I always go into these interviews and like, I know I'm really good and I get arrogant and that turns off the, turns them off. The hiring manager doesn't like me because I'm arrogant. It's like, I guess I've had to learn to tone that down. And so confidence has a mix of humility in it. Like it knows that you, you could be anyone. You could be less than what you are if you didn't have the tools that you have today. So confidence understands that confidence has some empathy. So when confidence says, I can do it, and you can too. Arrogance says, I can do it, I'm the best. Probably you shouldn't even try. It's, you probably just embarrass yourself. This is kind of the difference in the mindset. Confidence seeks to build up others. Arrogance seeks to step on top of others to get yourself higher than the rest. Awesome questions, thank you, those are great. All right, let's talk about job application materials. Clarity of mind and intention and direction are immensely beneficial to the development of confident job application materials. Let me say that again in a slightly different way. It's incredibly important. Clarity of mind and intention and direction are critical to accelerating your career. 
I've worked with a number of professionals that have four, five, six different interests and in different job roles. And I, I understand the impulse. Curious engineers are very smart people and we wanna, we're always learning and we wanna understand and we wanna do everything. But you, you, if you're, you're the type you wanna be a data analyst and a data scientist and a software engineer and a business marketer and a program manager and oh, I'll just let's do digital marketing and front end development, maybe full stack development. And by the time you've, you've hit, the, you've created this huge list, it's become so watered down, you don't know where to start and you lose focus. It's not disciplined. Most people are most productive when they focus on one thing. And then also this tendency of trying to do too much dilutes one's personal brand. This is hard to go up to a stranger and they say, oh, what do you do? Well, I'm a data scientist and an analyst and a, a project manager. And they're like, their head is spinning. They, they don't know what to make of you because you haven't clearly defined your personal brand. And as a result, it's harder for recruiters to place an applicant. Scattered focus leads to generic, generic job application materials that try to be everything to everyone. I see professionals with a lack of focus every day on my LinkedIn feed. And allow me to preface, I'm not here to shame anyone. And on one hand, the creators of these posts that I'm about to talk about must have some level of self-confidence to put themselves out there publicly in the way that they do. But from my cultural perspective and my cultural reference, these kind of posts that I'm about to talk about make a person look desperate. And I'm talking about these posts on LinkedIn that are asking anyone for any job, doing anything. It's like there's a template because these posts are almost exactly alike to one another. Now, some people, they'll drop comments for reach and others will like the post. I've seen an OP grab his failed post, shame his network for not giving him the engagement that he felt like he deserved. And I couldn't believe it, it worked. Like his second post had tens of thousands of likes and engagements is mind boggling to me. And I guess at some point it does work and I understand the place where they're coming from. It's very difficult right now. And millions of people are unemployed and they're hurting. And I get that, but I'm more weightily perceive this kind of I'll do anything for anyone tactic as a tactic of desperation that lacks real substance. And now I would never want anyone that I work with to make a post such as the one I'm describing to you because I want my clients to have a clearly defined trajectory for their lives. So I wanna to explain to you the difference. If you don't know what you want to do with your life, someone will come along and task you with things that you can do for theirs. Now I learned this lesson with considerable pain. Those who lack a sense of direction will be directed. To experience exponential growth, it's critical to define a singular objective and then pursue that with everything that you've got and this undiluted and undistracted pursuit of that objective will give birth to confidence as you begin to experience success along the way right, take time to clearly understand your ambition take time to understand who you are and you'll be able to write your purpose with unwavering confidence Once you've taken time to understand yourself, you'll be able to write a strong summary statement in LinkedIn. You'll be able to generate a resume that's re refined and clearly shows that you have the specific skills and experiences required for the next level in your career path. You'll also be able to use language that's unwavering, resolute, and determined. And this will be very attractive to others. They'll want to learn more about you and your work and you'll find that doors of opportunity begin to open all around you. And as a bonus, when you speak with recruiters and hiring managers, you'll never, you'll never find yourself saying, please, I need, I need work. I, I can do anything, just whatever you need, I, just whatever. Instead, you'll be ready to present a pitch showing hiring managers exactly how you can help them achieve their goals. And you'll have the confidence to identify and speak to the managers 
or the company's pain point and show them how you can solve their pain. And that ability alone will allow you to write a ticket to almost any job you like. The biggest difference there is one person is asking a manager to find a job for them to do versus when you know yourself, you're telling the manager what you can do for them. And if you were a hiring manager, who would you rather hire? Let's check the chat real quick. We got anything here? Yeah, I think you're right, Wei Chun, about arrogance coming from a lack of confidence. You're trying to cover up a lack of confidence by being arrogant. And then staying true to one brand, like an area of specialization, that's, that's fantastic. Because it's so it's going back to this, we're intelligent and curious and creative people. And so we see a lot that's very interesting. And so it can be very difficult to stay on one path. And, and I, I hear you. And the way to do that is to really understand yourself. You can take some personality tests to help you learn about yourself, take some time to meditate, and to write down your thoughts, try to clarify what it is that you'd like to do with your life. What's one goal that you would like to work on? And then plan to work on that for 15 to 20 years. Once you've mastered one thing, then you can go on and you can master a second thing. And once you master a second thing, you can go on and master a third thing. Once you develop that discipline to master one thing, it becomes easier to go on to the next because you've already got that discipline, you've got that habit. And so I think it's daily practice, it's practice. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. So you'll notice that I haven't said anywhere that this is easy, right? What we're talking about is, is pretty hard because it is hard to stay on one track. And I'm not saying that you can do this one time and then you're set for life. Growth is incremental. It takes us years to progress from being a baby to a child, to an adolescent, finally being an adult. And even then we found out that the brain continues to grow until you're 26 to 28 years old. So like for the first three decades of your life or fully two decades, you're continuing to grow. No, that's three, yeah, math. And we are on a journey to achieve our vision of our highest self. And that's, that's not one in a single day. To the world, it looks like it's one in a single day. But to us, we know we put in all the sweat and blood and tears. You're wondering if we're going to make it and then forcing ourselves to get up again and do it. And then finally, we're this overnight success, according to the world's eyes, because they don't have the discipline. And so what does this journey look like? What does it require? You are on a journey of extreme confidence extreme innovation and it feels and it looks a lot like practice and because it is and we practice confidence so that when our time comes we're ready to perform it's going back to the mirror we're practicing so we're ready some of the greatest performers say you should practice nine times as often as you perform so if you're going to perform for an hour you practice for nine hours and if you do that you'll be able to perform without apology because you've put in too much time to waver. And by the time you're ready to perform, you've rehearsed so much that there's no way you would allow yourself to misstep. And after you perform, then you need to rest. And resting might be taking a nap or reading a book, really anything that allows you to disconnect from your work, you gotta unplug. Your goal is to allow your brain to relax and recuperate before you begin to practice again. Okay. This is a vital step. Research has shown that the greatest performers take five hours more than the average person. Allowing yourself to rest is critical to everything we're talking about today. You fail to rest and you put yourself at risk for burnout. Another trend that we're seeing globally, burnout is higher than ever before. People are not able to separate themselves from the work. They're not allowing themselves to rest and they're burning out. And we've covered quite a bit here from discussing the importance of having confidence 
to why it can be evasive. We explored ways to take control of your subconscious thoughts to improve your self-confidence. We talked about practical ways that you can practice to assist your, your confidence, to grow that confidence in your job search. And we covered how you can use daily practices to build confidence in yourself over time. The last thing I'd like to say is if you ever feel low on self-confidence, you can borrow the confidence that I have in you. And I believe you can be great. And you can borrow that confidence and let that carry you through until you're able to build up your own reserves of self-confidence and do what you're meant to do. I thank you all. Now see that Hamash made a comment, how to say no when the hiring manager asks for your previous compensation while salary negotiating. Yeah, salary negotiate, that's a whole thing. Now we could, we could talk about, that could be an hour webinar itself. Best way to say no, I'll just give you a couple quick tips on that would be, you wanna dodge the question. You never wanna give away your salary, uh, especially research has shown at least in America that women and minorities, when they reveal their salaries, they tend to end up earning less than their white male or Asian male counterparts. So the way to avoid that is to say, I'm, you can say approach it different ways. You always wanna be quiet and, and back it up with your enthusiasm, but you would say essentially, I'm not comfortable sharing my salary or my salary isn't relevant to this job. And so I'd rather not disclose that. Or I would prefer not to disclose my salary. Or you can say, I, I expect that you will make the first offer. I expect that you and the company will make the first salary offer and we can go from there. I'm very excited for this role and I'm looking forward to discussing this opportunity further with you, but I'm not comfortable uh, sharing what my current salary is. And they continue to press. You can find different variations on that. Um, you can go to a range. So you can say, I have done my research and I see that the range for this role is X to Y. You could give that range. And I expect to be inside of this range. If you know that you are senior level, I believe in, in your case, Hamas, that you're, you just graduated, right? So you're looking at like either entry level or mid level. So I would take a salary range for entry to mid. So this is the range that I see. So I'm expecting something in this range. And then go from there. And if they keep compressing, you can call their bluff. So look, is this going to be a problem? I could talk to the hiring manager. If you prefer, I could talk to the hiring manager if this is going to be a problem. At that point, the recruiter is probably going to back off because they don't want to deal with the hiring manager. Uh, this is this is a theme that's kind of a high tense or high stress situation that you want to practice in front of a mirror. During teamwork, how to deliver your thoughts when you're worrying your idea is not as good as others, especially when your colleagues are somehow aggressive. Sure, it, you know, and where is that aggressiveness coming from? That's probably a lack of confidence somewhere or they're worried that maybe their idea isn't good enough. And so they're gonna be extra aggressive to get pushed through. You've gotta be firm. You've gotta know your place. If you can do research on your ideas, sometimes it's just a gut idea, right? And you just have a gut instinct. And you've gotta recognize when that is, and there's nothing wrong with that. Gut instincts can be correct. I mean, you look at the research, someone created the research and that research was created off gut instincts. And you, you might be a judging type personality, not, not judging like the negative connotations, but you just judge a thing to be true. And then you, you roll with that and you push that forward. You can look for allies, you can communicate, you can try to flesh out that idea and send that an email to your direct supervisor, try to get them on board. If your direct supervisor is the one who's overly aggressive, then I would suggest maybe once you put in a certain amount of time at that company, so, you know, like I'd say eight to 12 months, then it's time to look for something new. So you don't want to stay in a toxic environment too long. Thanks a lot for sharing all the valuable advice. So it's sometimes difficult to be confident while talking to someone for the first time. What would you suggest a good way to be calm when initiating a conversation while building confidence? Yeah, I love this one. This is a great question. The way I approach interviews or meeting strangers 
is that this is an opportunity for me to talk to other nerds. I consider myself a nerd. I'm really into computers and I love coding and I love helping people. And so I'm like, those are things that I'm, I really nerd out about. And I consider my, I consider, I just, in my mind, I imagine the people I'm going to be interviewing with to also be nerds. So it's an opportunity for me to talk to my tribe. It's an opportunity for me to talk to people who are into the same things that I'm into as much as I'm into them. And then it just becomes a conversation. And yeah, they're going to ask questions if you're in an interview setting, you know, they're going to ask questions. It's their job. It's their job to find the limits of your knowledge. And this is part of the interview process. Don't be nervous about that. Show up and be prepared. Uh, in stranger, in like if you're networking or something, let just feel the room for about 15 minutes. You know, once you've felt a room for about 15 minutes, you should feel start to feel comfortable with that. Don't psych yourself out. These are just people like you. These are people who are going to go home and they're going to have something that's going to keep them up at night. They're going to, they have some kind of a problem. It might be in their family or their job or something. They're just the people. They're the people just like you. It's just meet them as people just like you. You know, think back to kindergarten. How easy was it for you to make friends in kindergarten and first grade? And we, we tend to lose that as we get older, but you know, hey, my name's JP, what's your name? What do you do? Be interested in them. If you're interested in other people, they will be interested in you. Yeah, those are all great questions. Any, anyone else, any other questions out there? All right, awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Before we go, I've got a few offers for you. So, you know, Paul and I, we are career inclusive. On December 10th through the 12th, if you enjoyed this and you want more of this, we have got a three-day inclusive, December 10th through 12th. That's nine weeks away from today. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're going to do a deep dive into everything that we discussed today. Plus, we're going to help you understand the job search process. We'll work together to build out your resume. We're going to make your LinkedIn profile boss. We're going to talk about and, and build a strong cover letter. I'm going to go through all of these. I'm going to give you the metrics required to build strong job application materials. We're going to talk about the negotiating. We're going to talk about networking, networking in, in person of when we're able to do so again and networking on LinkedIn. And we're going to give you real tips, real tools so that you can accelerate your career and take yourself to the next level. So that's nine weeks from today. It's going to be four hours a day. We'll have an hour lunch break. And it's going to be great. I'm really excited for this. The three-day inclusive is $4.99, but I've cut the price today as a thank you for you all being here. If you register today, that price is only $2.79. That's more than a 40% discount. And it's valid for the rest of the day. And at the end of the day, the price goes back up. Um, also, if you're saying, well, this is great, that sounds great, but I need help right now. I need help with my resume and my LinkedIn profile right now. We offer a, a complete job application package that does your resume, your LinkedIn profile, your cover letter, and one other online portfolio of your choice that could be GitHub or Kaggle or GitLab or an online portfolio that you've, you've built, like a .me page. And I'll look at those four things. Normally that's $199 for the four. Plus you get a second review for free. I've cut that to $99. And you won't beat that anywhere. It's a, it's a steal. Normally one resume or one LinkedIn review is $99. So you get the price of four for one. Plus you get that second review after we've talked and you've gone through a major first draft revisions. Um, finally, if I offer free, a, a one free 15 minute consultation. If you haven't taken advantage of it yet, I know most of you all, I've spoken with you in the past. Some of you are new. If you would like to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll give you 15 minutes and, and we go through and talk and we do real talk and I'll give you real advice. You can do that on the, the meetings page on our website. That's careerinclusive.com slash meet dash with dash me. It's probably easier just to go to the homepage and then click meetings. 
if we've already had the one-on-one -on -one and, and you want to have a longer, a lengthier conversation, I have a one hour one-on-one -on -one consultation that I do. Normally that's $99, but that, that price has been discounted to $79. Again, as a thank you all for sharing your time and sharing yourselves with me here today. So check that out. Any of that sounds interesting to you. I'd love to work with you. And then we've got another webinar coming up in approximately five weeks, November 7th. It's the first Saturday. We're going to talk about change your story, change your life, how to develop your personal brand and get the attention you desire from recruiters and hiring managers. Like I said, I know change your story, change your life. You hear that a lot, it's kind of cliche, but I really believe it. It worked for me. I literally changed my story and it has changed my life. And I wanna help you do that too. Books. There's some great books out there. Rest is a great book that talks about rest. Grit, grit's a fantastic book. Grit, grit, get, man, grit is loaded with goods. I, I would recommend grit, it's, it's awesome. I think at some point, you know, and books are great. At some point you want to get, read the books or do a little bit of reading, but remember to do, don't just read, do. Doing is the most important thing. Awesome. Well, y'all have a great day a good night, wherever you may be in the world. You're welcome. You're welcome, boy. Thank you. All right. Au revoir.